Look at all this gorgeous carbon fiber. The supposed evil flap valve. Somebody's gonna win this bike real soon. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eep here and welcome to season four of the new bike build series. We're taking this brand new 2018 Yamaha R1M and with the help of our channel sponsors, we're gonna turn this motorcycle into something more brilliant and amazing than it already is. At the end of the build series, we are giving this motorcycle away to one of you people viewing the video. Information on how you might win this motorcycle is in the description if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. Just look at this beautiful carbon fiber that Zach has laid out on the bench right here. Most of it is going to be installed onto the R1M in a very short amount of time. We're going to take a poll to see if you all want to get the tank extender, which is carbon fiber cover that goes over the tank, um, installed into the motorcycle. And if you guys want to have the carbon fiber that is here on the table painted to match the color scheme of the R1M here. So patrons will be able to vote on that poll and let us know how we should go with this build. Zach, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, I'm just cleaning up from the last job here. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, let me show you what we're talking about. So, great reason to become a patron, because then you get to put your uh, peace of mind into it. And yes. You'll actually have some say in how we customize it. But what I was thinking, if I were to go my way, these tail pieces here, as you can see this whole piece is silver. Yes. I was thinking we would just paint this stripe right here, the factory silver. I like the that. The rest would be carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. And then... The frame covers would be just be full carbon fiber. Yep. Our side covers, we'd leave them full carbon fiber. Okay. But our airbox cover, if we look at the stock piece here, you can see we have uh, silver and then blue and then where it's painted black. We'd leave this part carbon fiber exposed, but have the blue line and the silver and put the Yamaha badges on it. I like that. And going that route, we probably would not use the tank cover because then this would match the tank. And basically, every piece that was plastic on the motorcycle would then be carbon fiber. It's yes. just it still has a classy kind of stock touch to it. Yes, and uh, for those of you that don't know, we have an expert painter, King David. He's painted my BMW HP4 wheels, and he done, he's done a lot of paint work for some other customers, and he will do a top-notch job at that. Yeah, it'll be top-notch. It'll match exactly. And uh, I think it would come out looking really good. But I think so. go ahead, vote whichever way you want. And like I said, great reason to go over, check out Patreon, see how it all works. And uh, it's pretty cool. You get to be part of the process. Yeah. Either so way. Otherwise, we might have to look into then finding a non-painted nose piece. Mm -hmm. And we'll just be full carbon. Right. Because if we don't paint this carbon fiber that's on the bench right here, there's not going to be anything to tie in the nose with the yeah. paint on it to the rest of the bike. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we would just then have a full carbon R1M, probably, I don't even know, if maybe we put the Yamaha badges here, but we probably wouldn't put R1 on it anyway, like you wouldn't know. Yeah. It'd be kind of slick looking too. So it could go either way, but personally, I like the paint look. I like that too, Zach. Quite the shipment in for Manny, about a million ton. Yeah. This is pretty awesome. It is. So we're going to lay it out, show everyone what we're going to be doing. Uh, today, work-wise, I think we're just going to get this motorcycle all taken apart and get ready to change some more components so right now right now the nose is in the way and we got the tail pieces and stuff so it's kind of in the way so we're just going to strip it down okay for a long winter of work here and we're we'll yes. chipping away we got steering dampers to get on we're going to take the flapper out of the intake and yep. uh what else do we have we got a full front brake system mm -hmm. uh, carbon fiber brake lines carbon like fiber you said brake lines yeah. triple trees yes new switch gear new radio buttons yep adjustable throttle so it'll be a quarter turn or you can adjust how fast the throttle turns yeah. to your liking with these little cams and we'll explain why and how all this stuff works so it's gonna be pretty cool but first we gotta get the bike apart so I think that's what we're gonna do today okay this is the panel that you have to remove if you need to get to your okay ECU and you can see ours has a sticker on it now yeah it's officially a race ECU yes 
pull off our knee panels again. I know we lifted the gas tank up before, but I don't think we showed it completely removed. All right. We? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so we'll show how that fuel line connector works and everything, so that'll be pretty neat. Let's just go there next. So basically, just take the panels off to expose the fasteners for the gas tank. Two up front, one in the back. nut all the way off, but leave the bolt in there so it'll help you support it so that when you tip it up, as we did before, we can now disconnect our hoses. Fuel pump. Just get a little pin. Fuel line, which I think we need a screwdriver. So our fuel line has this locking connector on it. You just pry down gently and now you can see the white part is sticking out a lot farther than it was. And then our fuel line comes off without leaking any fuel. Nice. Yep. Oh boy. Opens up a big spot. Yeah. Um, let's get back onto this side panel work here. We gotta get these inner panels out and the plastic off the sides. And then we'll get the nose off. So let's just remove all the rest of the box. Yeah, so this, this side piece comes attached to this, so you can't remove this one separately like you can on the ECU side. There's the bolt that you can see is holding it on. Yeah. So we really didn't need to remove that one. trim piece off. I don't know why there's a little pocket in there. If you need to hide anything, good to know. There you go. Got a little hide hidden spot. It takes you a while to get to it, but right. <laughs> it's there. This side houses all your electronic connections, your fuse boxes up here. Okay. Diving into what all these connectors do, because we're going to have to unplug them. This is where the switch is. The switch gear plugs in over here, your key plugs in over here. Pretty much every electrical component up here plugs in over down here. Oh, we definitely gotta get the mirrors off, that's for sure. So they plug in somewhere around here. Of course the wire goes behind the fuse box. Ah, there it is. And this connector has a little lock you have to lift up, and that comes unplugged. Two uh, 10 millimeter nuts on the mirror here. We just loosened these up before, if you remember, to install the windscreen. I do but remember. We didn't take yeah. them all the way off. This time, now that we have the Wire disconnected, we can remove them completely. Okay. Should fit through the hole. Just barely. All right. Here's the difference on your track bike right here. Feel how heavy that is. Oh, heck yeah. Imagine two of them. Yeah. So it's got to be worth two, three pounds each. Yeah. Wow. He's right. It's pretty darn substantial. But. No one liked it when we took the mirror off the S1000. So no. We'll leave them on. And I didn't like it either when riding it. <laughs> it. It is. It takes a little bit to get used to. Once you get used to it, though, it's not so bad. Yeah. You just don't worry about what's going on behind you. Right. Just keep just going. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just keep looking forward. Yeah. Allen had bolts 
that were up here that must be holding just the carbon fiber piece on, which it is. And now we can get the rest of the fasteners to pull that whole front piece if necessary. I'm just gonna take a picture so I remember where all these wires go. Good idea. When we go to reassemble time, you wouldn't believe how much that helps. Because even as good as the service books are, sometimes the picture you took just has the one part that you need. Looks like our intake flapper valve, I would kind of guess, is right underneath here. The horn? No, that's not the horn. That's oh. the, this is a vacuum pot. Oh. Kind of looks like a horn, though. Yeah. So let's try taking, there's four of these that look the same. Five millimeter Allen heads. Let's take them out and see what winds up coming loose. One on each side here. So it looks like they routed us. They did a circle of the wires all around the nose. It's kind of weird. There we go. Got the wire coming from our electronic steering damper. Oh, it's just, it is disconnected. It's held on with a zip tie here. On a clip, we'll have to cut that zip tie. Because we're going to be changing that part out, we got a nice Olin steering damper. You mean Olin? Oh yeah, that's right. I, <laughs> I always forget how to say that. Hmm. Okay. Pull that through. Oh, I see. If I take this bolt out, our light our light will stay put. You got a hand on it? Yep. Thank you. Then we won't have to worry about on it. It's free! Here we go. Alright. <laughs> big mass of electronics. So Zach's trying to figure out how to get to that flapper valve, huh? Yeah, so we can see it's located up top here in the intake. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out the best router removal. Pulled this rubber piece off. Looks like there's just some grating in our way here. We might be able to pop that out. Or we can take this whole assembly off and take it apart. I don't know what's going to be quickest is pretty much all we're looking for at this point. So we've got Silent Al at Sills BMW here, working as usual, and Zach's over here with a stripped down R1M, fooling around inside there. What are you doing, man? So checking out the uh, intake flapper valve, as it's called. What it does is it probably, at lower RPM, just restricts the airflow. Okay. So if we go ahead and apply vacuum to it with our it's, vacuum gauge, you can see closed. it closed. Yeah. So the only air that gets through is down low here. Then when you rev the engine up, it loses vacuum and it will open that up so you get more flow. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get it out, but also just having fun. Having fun, huh? Like that guy there that just walked away? <laughs> it's the grumpy cat. No, everybody's here today at Sills BMW. Yeah, we see you. Were you going to use your litter box just a second ago? No? Okay. So he's not potty trained. So now that we're done playing, let's right. see. Sometimes you can just spin these and they'll come out. Oh, yeah, it looks like a spin. Oh, and it came out. So. Nice. But now it would just flop around in there. So now we actually have to remove the flap itself. I'm thinking the only way we're gonna be able to do that, we're, we're gonna have to at least, we're gonna have, probably have to take this off and split it. Cause you can see it splits down the center here. Yeah. Loosen up all the screws. I'm gonna try just loosening all them and see if it splits enough to come out. If not, we'll have to take it off the bike. Okay. Oh, you got the screen out. Yeah, I was able to flex it enough to get the screen out, but the flapper itself must have be on a longer pin. And I don't think we're cheating this one. And I have to roll it backwards, because as you can see, the bolts that hold this on yeah. are right in line with the forks. Yep. I did find the steering damper while I was poking around under here. Oh, cool. So this is what we're going to be replacing. Nice. Was this an electronic damper? Yeah, it was an electronic okay. one. This is where it plug in. Mm -hmm. There's a little stepper motor that would spin and adjust the dampening characteristics of it, make it firmer, softer, based on speed, lean angle, gear position. Pretty cool. Some, some people don't believe that they work or work quick enough, so they just like the good old manual. Set it in your position and you know it's going to work. Yeah. So the four bolts that hold this on were very heavily loctited into the frame, but got them out. Now we gotta unplug our, this should be our intake air temp sensor, which is already up in the nose, so we don't have to relocate it, like nice. we did in the S1000s. We'll just detach that vacuum line so we can get this to the bench and get our last fastener out, so we can split this open. Okay. It's a lot of work. It is, man. Jeez. 
ballpark estimate on what you, you would charge a customer to, 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 to just disable their uh, flapper valve? I'm thinking, even if you're good at it, it's probably gonna take two hours. Mm -hmm. So probably like two and a half hours. Okay. To maybe two, two and a half hours. Average rate's about a hundred bucks an hour. So okay. be right around 200, 250 dollars. Not bad actually. So I got the last bolt out. We can now open this up. And there oh, goes wow. the supposed evil flapper valve. <laughs> evil, yeah. <laughs> evil to get out at least. Yeah. So now we just have this large intake opening. And now we could probably find a piece of plastic that would fit in here. Mm -hmm. uh, that would take a little bit. You can make something, JB weld something. And then you'd also have to make sure that you plug any of these vacuum lines because you can't have a vacuum leak. If you have a vacuum leak, your bike would idle really fast. Yeah. And uh, it would, you'd hear a weird hissing noise. It's kind of bad for it because it's unmetered air, so it would be running lean. So you don't want that to happen. Um, I think, I don't see why we couldn't just put this back in. And then we can even, we can even hook it up. And, and that'll it, take care of the vacuum leak. It's yeah. just going to be sticking out like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to block that much airflow. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so either. I think you're right about that. And then we take care of it all with just one shot. Yep. It's not going to do anything. It, it'll move up and down. It's going to move this little rod up and down, but mm -hmm. that's about it. So I think we might just go that route unless uh, throughout the week I find a nice little plug. Then okay. I'll take it out of there because it'll be apart for a little bit. If I do find one, I'll let you know what it is. Cool, man. Well, thanks, Zach. Sorry this took so long. Oh, no big deal. Like I said, it's learning for everyone. Yep. And uh, that's good. That puts us in a good spot to get to the steering damper. Maybe yes. we'll get that changed. Do that next. Backs. Next video, yes. And then we can get the air box off. Hopefully we'll start getting our clip-ons in and stuff because we're going to change these throttle cables and change our throttle to a domino style. Right now you can see this. It's actually really not that crazy of a throttle, but it's definitely more than 90 degrees. Okay. I think the domino one would let us go from nothing to full throttle in 90 degrees, if so desired. Okay. It also has different cams, so it won't be so aggressive. Sure. Because it gets, it's pretty crazy when you put a quarter turn <laughs> throttle on a leader bike. It's fun. Yeah. But it's, it takes a bit to get used to. It's weird. Because yeah. you're, it's not that you're going faster, you're opening the throttle plates faster, though. Okay. So, it's, it's cool stuff. All right. Well, sweet. But, uh, thanks for watching. And we got a very goofy looking R1M <laughs> at the end of this video this time. Yeah. And head over to Patreon, check it out so you can take the poll. Take the polls, whether or not we're getting stuff painted. Yeah. And uh, give your enter, enter and have a chance to win it. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks awesome. for watching. Thanks, Thanks Zach. Later. Yeah, man. So that was a lot of work for Zach. He made it look easy and, and a breeze, but wow, disassembling this bike all the way down to how it looks now just to get that flapper valve removed. It's pretty awesome. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're a current subscriber, tap that bell so you can be notified when I upload new content. Zach's just admiring the bike naked, huh? Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. yeah that's look good. You can win this motorcycle. Information on how you might win the bike is in the description. Stay tuned for more videos. We got some amazing stuff and exciting stuff coming up next for the build series. Thank you guys so much for viewing. We'll catch you next time on the Naked New Bike Build Series.